No, it does not work as a Stormtrooper blaster. This is the first handheld flux core welder I've ever seen. So of course, we gotta test it out. The Azuno MiG-100. Except that it's a flux core only machine. There is no way of hooking up gas or having that attached to it. So just call it the best fluxing machine. <clears throat> Electric shock can kill you. Noted. Taking it out of the box. I'm not gonna lie, I did not have high hopes for this machine whatsoever. They totally surprised me with a really long power cord. This is about a 10 foot power cord. And then you get to the very end and this is like a lamp cord thickness and uh, two prong. So, oh, and right here, 15 amp for the capability of the cord and the max amperage that this machine can go is 26. So don't run it on the max settings, except you know we will. Warning, keep people with hard pacemakers away from working area. What did I just buy? Another reason why this is a flux core only machine is the ground clamp right here. It is a hardwired connection, meaning you can't take off or switch polarities. And with flux core, you want DCEN or your electronegative, but then it takes away those options for any other crazy type processes you want to do. Really quick, before we get into the testing of the machine, I, I want to mention that they do include a sweet little wire chipping hammer and wire brush, which I don't know, this might tell you how many little machines that I've tested recently. I should just start throwing those away. I was excited though that they actually included wire. A one pound or yeah, half a kilogram. So what is that? 1.1 something? Little roller that's in there is a 0.8 millimeter and they give you a 0.9 millimeter and then also contact tips for both the 0.8 and the 0.9 millimeter. It's nice. And lastly, they include a second MIG nozzle. This truly is a MIG nozzle, because if we pull this off, we've got some little gas holes right here. And the whole purpose of this is to direct the flow of your MIG gas into the weld. We've already mentioned, we can't MIG weld with this, so really this is pointless. You'll see me probably weld without this. So the roller setups, it's a little hokey and different. A lot of plastic in here. These little rollers are just teeny little guys. We'll see how long they last. But the tensioner is just, you just push down on this little spring. And so to be able to actually feed the wire through and I don't know, you need some like, well, pretty much you need to go grab a screwdriver. I could barely put my fingers in there to while holding this down and to get the wire through just takes a little finesse. And then once you actually get it through and all set up, I don't know, this is kind of just a very typical setup for what you would see for any other type MIG gun with either MIG or flux core on how it ends and your contact tip. I've got this hooked up to a 20 amp breaker, but as mentioned, the actual plug itself is only 15 amps, so we'll see if it gets hot. It is just as simple as just plugging it in and then you're going to attach the ground clamp to whatever workpiece you're working on. If you've got a metal table, that will do. We've got two knobs here, one with a V, one with an A. Typically with these type of machines, the amperage controls the wire speed and then your voltage is just your straight up voltage. But there's no increments or I guess numbers on what those actually correlate with. And that's because they work together. And so as you raise one, you're gonna wanna raise the other. There's also the power switch and then a little button for the wire thickness of either your 0.8 or your 0.9. Also one other little yellow LED with a very teeny tiny thermometer on that. That will be your temperature overload. Powering it on. All right, I'm gonna take this off just because. I don't know if you can still hear me with the fan, but as I'm adjusting these, I actually can't tell any difference in the wire speed coming out. So. I don't know if that knob does anything. Yep, 
There's no difference. I don't know, let's actually test it out. This machine says it could only go up to 100 amps, but as mentioned before, there are no dials or indication numbers as to what amperage you're actually running on. So these first coupons are 16th inch, and I just chose randomly going right in the middle. Surprisingly, it actually turned out pretty good. Probably could have turned it up just a tad bit more, but this little lap joint turned out great. Now bumping it up to eighth inch coupons, and you can definitely tell with the machine maxed out, this first part was a, definitely a cold weld. By the end of the coupon, it was heated up enough. If you are just starting out, I would suggest heating up the material if you're doing at least eighth inch, just to get it a more consistent weld throughout. I quickly flipped it around and did a whole other bead on the opposite side, and that actually turned out just fine, most likely because it was still pretty hot from the previous side. So the takeaway is eighth inch is definitely pushing the max of the machine. Now, just out of curiosity, I did take my glove off and I wanted to feel the cord if it was even getting hot or not. It wasn't. I don't know, maybe if I was testing the duty cycles and just doing straight beads nonstop until something give out, gave out, maybe it would get hotter. The takeaway would be is you can do eighth inch, but you're definitely maxing out the machine. Despite the fact that it is super awkward having the full machine right next to your head, it works. Would I go out and buy another one? Well, probably not. So there you have it. Like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.